Hello everyone, this is the introduction for Archimedes lab. So, in this lab, we want to use Archimedes principle to calculate the buoyant force on an object. Archimedes principle says that the buoyant force is equal to rho g v, where rho is the density of the fluid, g is gravitational constant, and v is a submerged volume of the object. So, to do that, we need to take some data. So, what we need is we need this mechanical scale right here, we need a styrofoam cup with water. We need a digital scale. We need a tall, uh, tall beaker with a spout. And we need an overflow beaker. And we also need our three metals. So we need a lead ball, a copper cylinder, and an aluminum cylinder. So to start, what we need to do is we need to take the mass of these three metals. And this is going to be called the dry mass. So how we do that is we go ahead and take the metals and hang them from a string like such and then take them and then record the mass. Do that for all three metals. Now the next part is we actually need to go ahead and include buoyant force in there. So how we do that is we go ahead and move this white stand up here so that it's above the hanging piece right here. Then we can go ahead and put our styrofoam beaker full of water right on the white stand. So as you can see, the scale's balanced now because it's not taking into account the mass of the water at all. What we're doing now is we're going to have, we're going to hang each of the metals from the hook and record their wet mass now. Because they're submerged in the water, there's a point force acting on them, so their apparent mass is going to change. So we're gonna call this the wet mass. Using the wet mass and the dry mass, we can figure out the buoyant force on the object. Once we go ahead and calculate the buoyant force on them, it's time for part two. So, we still need the metals, but we don't need the mechanical scale anymore. So, to start, what we need to do is to go ahead and take the mass of the dry overflow beaker. Once we take the mass of this, then we'll go ahead and take the big beaker and put it right here. Because this one has the spout, our goal is to make sure that the water line is just barely below the spout. So we need to pour water in here until it just a little bit comes out of the spout. And then we need to let it drain until no more is coming out. That's how we ensure the water line is equal with the spout. So I'll say water is just below the spout. So as you can see, the water is stopped. So we need to go ahead and dump this water out of the overflow beaker, overflow bucket, and let it sit right there. Now, what we know is that right now, no water is flowing out. But if we submerge an object in the water, the water level is going to rise. And so the water is actually going to come out the spout now. Because water is incompressible, what we're doing is we're raising by however much volume we put inside the beaker, that's however much volume the water level is going to rise, which is how much volume is going to be in this overflow bucket. So once we go ahead and do that, you want to go ahead and submerge the metal just below the water line. And as you can see, the water just slowly drips out and you want to wait for the water to stop dripping. So that way, you know, the total mass of the water has moved from the big beaker to the overflow bucket. Okay. So once you have that, go ahead and mass this again. You want to mask the overflow beaker with water. Now, since you know the mass of the beaker with water inside of it, 
And with no water, you can figure out the mass of the water that was displaced from the large beaker. And this is going to be different for each method. Find. Now, since we know the mass of the displaced water, and we also know the density of water, which is one gram per milliliter, or 1,000 kilograms per meter square or meter cubed. So that's the density. So using that, we can go ahead and figure out the volume of overflow water, which I'll call V overflow. So you need to find the overflow volume. Now, you need to repeat those steps for each of the metals. Okay? So you get three overflow volumes of water. Now, the next part is because we said that the volume of overflow water should be equal to the volume of the metal, what we need to do is calculate the volume of each metal. So we need to calculate the height of the cylinder and the diameter for both the cylinders, and also the diameter of the lead ball, so that way we can find the volume of the metals, which I'll call V sub metal. V sub metals. So once we have that, we want to compare the two and say, hey, does it make sense? What do our values look like? Okay. There will be some more questions on the back of the lab. And yeah. to recap, what we want to do is you want to go ahead and find the dry mass of the three metals, then submerge them in water, find the wet mass of the three metals to calculate the buoyant force. Then for this one, what we want to do is you want to dip the metal in until the water just comes out, measure that mass, compare that volume of overflow water to the volume of the actual metal, and determine if that makes sense. Okay. If you have any questions, let I or Professor Bond know. Other than that, you have everything you need for the lab, you can go ahead and get started.